That's all I'm going to say. You can do the math. And fortunately, if I don't elaborate any further, AK people won't figure it out. <laughs>
too far down that rabbit hole because people are like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, we don't care that much about it. Like, am I allowed to curse on here? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Tits right. ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, Whatever. one of those was a curse word, but I get what you're saying. Or trying to say. We show buttholes on here. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Now, that sounds no, like a dare. No, we don't. Yeah. So, I've shown a buttholes. No, in any event, I mean, and, and that's really the challenge is trying to keep things. Um, there's like a, a saying that I like by LBJ. Where, you know, for any given subject like M16 barrels, you know, you can start talking about M16 barrels for 30 minutes, but it's a lot like pissing down your own leg. You're the only one who thinks it's hot. Right. So you have to kind of keep things concise. You got to keep it interesting to like the average viewer. And that's what I've always tried to do is kind of seed in maybe like really cool, important details beyond just shit that I'm making up behind a camera, um, but make it consumable. So that's, that's what I try to do. And I, I genuinely have a blast people think i've got ryan you know my camera guy uh my hetero life mate um a very good friend of mine he's best good camera. looking you could have picked a worse one yeah yeah for sure dude and he can shoot it kind of pisses me off because like occasionally occasionally um he will outshoot me he is he is a very good shot um and he's a great camera guy and occasionally i'll outshoot him behind a lens you know like occasionally we're both photographers videographers and shooters well he worked at a range for a while yeah yeah he mm -hmm. did no and that's that's my excuse did you work outside of law uh, the your law degree did you work with firearms or did you police military no i mean like i've gone so i mean how i got into it i'm again you know try to avoid pissing well, down my we, leg we here. met 10 or 12 years we ago met, yeah, when because you were doing videos at Shooters Club. That's right. And that, no, that was even before, like, we met 10 or 12 years ago, just about when I became a concealed weapon or concealed handgun instructor here in Louisiana, concealed handgun permit. Um, but when I became an instructor, that's when I started going to Jefferson more. I was going there just for fun, you know, to, to shoot anytime I got a new gun or whatever. I mean, I thought you guys had the best range. Um, Did you area. have to shoot that target at friggin' 15 yards? Oh, are you talking about the dumpy one downstairs? No, no, no. For the for the instructor service. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then and dude, you're doing it. I'm not going to say who my instructor instructor was, but <laughs> none of these motherfuckers hit that thing. Like none of them do. But I but no, I was like I'm not leaving here like I, you know, um 45 I, friggin' feet yeah. with a 6 inch group. Well, they they just did it this weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd you do? We did it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. Like if you don't know your and it's like it and was the, a, it was an outdoor range. It was it was pretty tough. I mean, mm -hmm. I, even here practicing every day till we went. No, it was, it's still uh, like as we sit here today. Like I would not do that in front of anyone. My like, my I, best target is hanging on the wall downstairs. I saw. It. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's I, so you and I go way back uh, because I was coming in there when you were working behind the counter. Well, yeah, um, yeah, you were just a wee boy. I was uh, mopping lad. up shit in the bathroom. <laughs> that, and I'm doing. sorry about that. Okay, I get really excited around guns. I said that earlier. That, 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 that has happened. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check my tuxedo. Did you um? Did you know that you had something back then, or were you just no, filming no, yourself? No, 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 no. The first time when I actually filmed, so just to, I never like casually filmed myself. The first time I actually filmed a video at Shooters Club was probably five and a half years ago. It was like one of the first. It was the Kimber Solo Sucks. And that's actually, I had a GoPro, and I put it up in the bay, in the shooting bay, and I was like, God, this video is terrible. Like, And at that point, I, I still was like a pretty decent shot, but it was dim in there, and the angle's like up, and it's a GoPro, high ISO, a bunch of noise. It just looked terrible. So that's when I was like, I got to find something else out. Like, I mean, it was like no... Uh, it's not a dig on Shooters Club, but it was so like... What video took off? <sighs> what video was the one that started it all? Um, I mean, so we had myself and Alex Caps. We co-founded the channel back in 2015. And Alex Caps, his dad has a sizable machine gun collection. So, I mean, I, I have to lay all the blame at Alex's feet because he had CNRs, machine guns, whatever... And Alex, dude, he would post a video every day. So we got over 100,000 our first year. Mm. And most of that, I mean, and Alex bounced like after the, the first year, year and a half. But he laid a very good foundation for the channel. Now, in terms of my content, um, two that I can think of that really, 
that really caused the channel to bounce. And we got 150,000 or maybe 200,000 the second year, right? Um, and it's been getting bigger and bigger. Uh, but I think that maybe in that second year, big ones for me were it was uh, a video called Eight Reasons Why the Mini 14 is Better Than the AR-15. And I would not say, and I say that in the video, this exact phrase, I would not say that a Mini 14 is better than an AR-15. I would not. But there are eight ways that it is, in fact, better. Like, try to find an all-stainless AR-15. Like, if you need a stainless gun for a reason, like, you know, keep on your boat or whatever, you can't do that with an AR. Or if it exists, I'm sure it's really shitty and really expensive. But a Mini 14, you can go downstairs right now and grab a stainless steel Mini 14. So it was shit like that, right? And, you know, but people, I think, were like, oh, you know, I can't wait to tear this guy a new asshole. And then the funny part about it is there were only seven reasons. I forgot to do the video on the eighth <laughs> reason. So the video, and I think maybe two people found that out. I mean, I think everybody was adequately pissed off within the first five minutes of the video. But that one got like three, four million views or something. And then when I went, uh, hung out with my buddy Taryn Butler and did How to Shoot Like John Wick. We did like a three video series and those were like multi-millions hmm. of views. Yeah, but there seems like there's a big jump from that to shooting with Taryn who did the John Wick movies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was. I mean, there, there was a big jump, but I mean, you, you just asked me off the top of my head like two that kind of, right. you know, made things pop. But I mean, was there are... one where you realized like this is a... This isn't just a hobby. This, this is something that I life. could. It, it was early on. Like early on, there were videos like we would do a video. Um, I, I did one that was like uh, Glock 19 versus the Ruger SR9. I think it was my first. Because, see, we started at SHOT Show. And we had access because we are the firearm blog, right? So people were willing to talk to the firearm blog. We had zero subscribers at SHOT Show. That really was, I think, the big kicker. We had zero subscribers at SHOT Show. We kicked it off at SHOT Show 2015. And people were like, oh, yeah, fire, fire on blog. Cool. We know you guys. Yeah, we'll talk to you on camera. And if you were just like Joe Blow from wherever and, you know, you just started a YouTube channel and you're like, hey, uh, Benelli, will you guys talk to me for like 20 minutes on camera? They'd be like, uh... Yeah, come back later, kid. You know, but we, but that being part of the firearm blog, I mean, I, I can't. What I'm trying to say is, I can't take responsibility for the channel being where it is. I'll we, take partial responsibility. We did. Uh, well, I used to do uh, once a month with ESPN Radio with Don Dubuque talking guns, and that allowed me to kind of talk to people at Shot Show. Um, but I was, I mean, I wasn't any good at it. This was eight or ten years ago, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Most, most of. And you do now. The, no, <laughs> no, but I have learned that uh, the. The fakeness that you get on TV a lot, you know, that radio voice, yeah. the cut to commercials, all that bullshit is going by the wayside. And in here, I mean, we can talk about whatever we want. We talk about ghosts and, uh, you know, sex positions and we talk, whatever the hell we want to talk about. And there's what no about commercials. sex positions with ghosts? Well, that's, that's, that's my next it. question. Yeah. So... I think it's. I think it's. Uh, and we get to shoot shit, right? Mm -hmm. And we get to shoot shit. We <laughs> blow stuff up. Uh, I think it's just a better form of entertainment than you know the news, which is why tons of podcasts get you know blow CNN out of the water on a on a subscriber or viewer basis. You know they're tired of the same old cookie cutter bullshit yeah, where nobody sure. gets to talk and say what they want to say. And sure. Have you found that that's a problem making videos now as opposed to 10 years ago with all the, with all the sensitivity out there? And what do you mean? Like specifically? Well, I mean, it seems like there's a, like ban in every gun video right, that's on freaking right. YouTube. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, what, you mean like dealing with like political tides? I mean, is yeah, that right. like, uh, you know, for me, like our motto is guns, not politics. And the reason for that is uh, there are a lot of guys that do guns and politics a lot, right? I mean, in fact, I think if you take the average YouTube channel, gun tube channel, we'll call it, uh, probably 85% of them do politics, 90% of them. Um, there's nothing I think that I could add um, or do better than anybody else who's out there doing it already. So we're in this minority of maybe like three or four other YouTubers who um, I would say are accessible. And I call us a gateway drug, if you will, you know, where it's like we want to be. And I don't even want to talk too much about it because if you start talking too much about it, then people are like, 
hold on a second. Like I'm watching some kind of like, you know, closet neoconservative right. brainwashing pro program. And it's not like that at all. I mean, I'm just trying to share my enthusiasm for the sport, for collecting, for guns with everyone. And I want the guy who is like, oh, I would never own a gun, not in this house. I want him to be like, oh, I think I don't own a handgun. And I want the guy who's like, oh, I, I've got a handgun, but man, those assault rifles, those are bad news. I want him to be like, oh, you know, I think assault rifles are, are actually kind of cool. Right. Like, are an AR-15 there is? You know, like watch my uh, AR-15 for home defense video with Clint Smith. You know, and he's like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Maybe I'll do it. And then we want the guy that has a bunch of AR-15s and or whatever plays video games I mean, hell, send him over to Tim at Military Arms Channel or Hickok 45, and then now he's, you know, donating to FPC and GOA and NRA, whatever. So, I mean, that's, I I don't care. I just want people to come into the sport. We need more people on our side. And, you know, one way to not do that is to get on and be like, yeah, you know, first of all, welcome to TFB TV. Second of all, RIP Dale. Um, third, if you don't like it, you can get out, you know, and right. like, you know, a bunch of like political rhetoric on the front end. And so we, we just don't do it. And, you know, I, and I'm very proud of the people who do. It well, seems to be working. I mean, it, we try it not seems to, to be working. It. We try not to do it either. You know? Well, you know, and I, I also try to, uh, get people, my wife's an environmental plaintiff's lawyer, right? So I also try to get people within. God, y'all are both lawyers. Yeah, man. How, how are arguments? Oh, in that dude, yeah, I know that's the first. Is anybody win? Has. No, no, and Holy it's a miracle shit. when the police don't get called. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and on the other hand, like I, I also want to try to get people in the gun community to be more open minded and not discard somebody like, oh, you're a Joe Biden voter. Like I'm not going to talk to you. You know, separate that, divorce yeah. that. We need to divorce politics. From firearms for from, purposes. From everything. Yeah, it, I mean, because... Just, uh, I, I hate you because you believe but, something different than I do. Uh, I just don't get that. When I was in law school, people were like, oh, James owns, he owns guns. He must be one of those uh, crazy, super Republican right. people. It's like, I'm as moderate as it gets, dude. Like, I mean, uh, I am i don't like talking about this very, but I'm a registered Republican. I always have been. But um, I am as moderate as it gets. I truly am. And, you know, people always make these assumptions because they have this identity of guns qua conservatism. Mm -hmm. Like, if you own guns, you must be a Trumper. You must be a conservative. And it's not the case. But you're we, a hillbilly. Right. You know? I am a hillbilly. I'm from Pensacola, <laughs> Florida. I am a hillbilly. So, you know, uh, fair point. But that said, you know, my goal is really to try to get people to think about guns as a separate issue that has value to all of us. Uh, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, like there's something here for you, I promise. Just get over that cognitive dissonance that you have thinking that everyone who owns a gun is a Trumper or everyone who owns a gun is a Trumper who hates you, you know, or is, is your enemy. So we kind of need to get rid of the polemics. And I think um, we could do better in terms of being ambassadors to people outside of the community to bring them in because I mean, we're right there, right? Yeah, I mean, that's we're right there. like one of the things we tried to do after we had that incident here in February was turn it around into a, you know, we all questioned what we carried, you know, like what's enough to take somebody right. down or something like that. And, uh, didn't try to make it like fuck everybody, you know, sure. And, you know, a negative side to it. Yeah. I mean, we are on the cusp of greatness here, right? I mean, we got all these people who uh, they saw uh, civil disruption, uh, COVID, uh, supply shortage, and there are people like, oh, shit, maybe I should have a gun. Maybe that's not a bad idea, you know, uh, uh, police budgets being cut. Um, and it's like, okay, all right, welcome to the club, buddy. Yeah. yeah, you know, you voted for such and such candidate, you know, in 2000. Oh, that, that demographic has definitely changed. Yeah, and when they walk in, they'll say, you know, I'm Democrat. I'm Democratic. I don't, I don't have any guns. I'm like, what does that have to do with it? Yeah, but, it, and it, <laughs> you know, it, it, right. And it's time to separate that issue. And it's time for them to not be afraid, you know, because That's I right. feel like you got a lot of closet gun owners right now. You know, people are <laughs> oh, like, we it's like, oh, my agree. God. You know, like, I, um, I'm a liberal, but, you know, I'm worried I'm going to get thrown out of the liberal club. Or the Pussy Hatters Club exactly. or whatever if I've got if they find out I've got a Glock nineteen. And it's like, no, nah, man, like let's separate those issues. So right. and there are a lot of people out there 
more than we know who just bought guns. I don't and, judge people by the kind of hammer they buy. Yeah. What? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Same well, I mean, shit. yeah. I mean, look, if you if you buy a Taurus, I will judge you. I just <laughs> just flat out say that. I love my closet. I got all sorts of shit in that closet. <laughs> Is that why you haven't come out of it? We're talking about yes. guns. We're talking about guns, Devin. <laughs> Stay on guns. No, no. <laughs> it's time to go to the closet. This is his therapy. He's got to get it out. But we'll retire politics. That's mo- the most I've talked about politics cumulatively <laughs> in the entire history of my being on the fire. Yeah, I mean, I don't like to talk about it too much either. Do you, do you think, though, that um, the country's at a point where being able to own a gun is going to change you mean like uh like in the pre- regulation in the present way that we know it i mean look uh, that it, it always has it always will like it depends on the administration there's always going to be some form of an obstacle so i mean look at 1994 to 2004 right you know the uh, you had a 10-year assault weapons ban and it's almost like people have forgotten about that you know everybody's like oh yeah you know i'd go uh whatever um go to the capitol march on the capitol like with my guns if they do this and this thing and it's like dude they did something much worse (laughs) not that that long ago i mean i remember going to the uh in tallahassee going to a uh a gun show the first time when it was like the floodgates were open and you could buy gun or you could buy magazines that hold more held more than 10 rounds and they and you know everybody was after the ones that said like restricted right. law enforcement mm-hmm. only. Like cool. this, oh, dude, I still have a bunch. I mm-hmm. still I, I don't know why I still get a little bit of a boner about them. But, you know, it's like, <laughs> but you know that said, it's like it, you know there's always going to be the ebb and the flow. But that's also why it's important to get more people. I want you know again another LBJ quote. I'd rather have them in the tent pissing out than out the tent pissing in. I want more people in the piss tent. You know, get in the the gun piss tent. And, you know, like welcome to the club. We I need had to piss be... and shit in my bathtub, mm. not but a few months ago. I'm not following, but I like it. I like the energy. <laughs> Do you, he has uh... a young daughter. <laughs> uh, you don't need it. It might have been her. It might have been me. Who likes spinach? My family comes over. <laughs> we only have one bathroom. Do you? Uh, is your wife a gun enthusiast? Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Lindsay is. I mean, obviously, she doesn't get to the range as much as I do. But you, know, you have kids? No, we're not going to. So <laughs> how did you that. manage that? To not have kids? Well, I mean, I know I mean, how fancy you birth there's control. A, t- yeah, there's a pulling process. out is what it's called. <laughs> but I mean, did, yeah. you, uh, did she not want to have kids? <laughs> um, I mean, we were both kind of like you know we could like we were both ambivalent about it. But then the thing is, it's like. You know, I've told you, Devin, we talked about this where it's like, man, I'm at my desk 50 hours a week as a lawyer. And then I, I run a YouTube channel on the back end that I spend a lot of time on. Um, we have other obligations. Uh, I've, uh, I've passed the Louisiana bar and the Florida bar. I'm about to take the Mississippi bar in February. My wife and I travel a ton. Um, have you all seen each other, Nick? Yeah, right. I know. Um, no, the good news is she looks great. Um, the and and that's another you know staying fit. Like we're both into fitness, um, and we're both into you know again traveling. Like, uh, traveling with my wife is one of my most favorite things in the world. So uh, we realized that something had to give. Like that means either like I don't want Lindsay. It's unfair for me to say, hey, Lindsay, give up your career because right. she loves her job. Give up your career um, so we can have kids. She would say, "Fuck you! Why don't you give up something?" Mm-hmm. And then, but that's how marriages should work, right? You know, it's a compromise, and it's like you say, um, you know, you're gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. You know, we, fuck it. Like, I'll have cats, dude. I don't even have to pick up their shit. <laughs> so neither one of you have have wanted to have kids. No, no, we do, but but it's just it wouldn't be fair to ourselves or the other person or the kid. Somebody's going to get fucked, right? Mm-hmm. In that, I mean, literally, and figure it out. Not the kid. Oh, God. What did I say? <laughs> Somebody give me another beer. Uh, you want another? Yeah, See, please, I mean, I'm, I, uh, man, I just I worry so much about... She, my wife now wants to have a second Thank kid, you, which Paul. ain't happening, son. But <laughs> even for the first... You know, I have a daughter, and I'm fucking terrified... Oh. Oh, dude, I'm terrified that you have a daughter. I know. She's in so much trouble. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's just... But, I mean, the way that the world's going, not even to have anything to do with guns, just the way that, I mean, you're a lawyer, the shit that you see every day. Well, not only... And I think it's getting worse. Not, not only better. society at large, but bear in mind when 
I mean, you're younger than me, I'm sure, but when I was in college, there were 6 billion people on the planet. Now, as we sit here today, there are eight. I mean, dude, that's wild. Think about that. You go from, and, and fact check me on that. So that isn't shit. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and and that isn't shit that I just pulled off like Facebook or whatever. I mean, that that is actual fact. I mean, you can look that up. Back in 2000, there were 6,000 people. Well, there's, uh, or 6 well, billion and now there's comment. eight. Um, I was gonna say it's a little bit less now, but yeah, yeah, sure, right. Now I read you, but that that's the way it works. I mean, that's the way it works. So um, you know, but that said, yeah, I, I think that's the other thing is I, I am pessimistic about the future, and I'm not sure that I would want to subject. Um, one that was of my, my kids. main yeah concern, and still is. I'm yeah, seeing my daughter's terrified. 21 and is out in the world, which is fucking terrifying for a too. partial yeah. part at the moment. But she's, uh, I, I worry about her, too, being yeah. out there. Yeah, I mean, you know, but then you also think about, you have to try to be, um, and I do try to be optimistic at times, but, you know, you think about what maybe our parents said. And they're like, oh, this world's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, mm-hmm. that goddamn communism, it's spreading like the clap. And, you know, like whatever the case, everybody's got a crisis. And, you know, eventually... I think one of them is going to be real, right? Do you think you'll see it in your lifetime? Maybe. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, is um, now I did read some news about like the um, children per family. Like that number actually has been steadily decreasing. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like something I just read on on uh, the flight home yesterday, uh, which I thought was kind of an interesting thing. But assuming we're going from six billion to eight billion. In like 20 years, and if we go from 8 billion to 10 billion, I they, mean, yeah, dude, we're going to be having like the calorie wars. They it's say gonna we're going like to top out at 12, but I don't even know how they come up with that number. I'm sure that there's somebody like some Malthusian. You know Jordan Peterson? No. You familiar with him? No. I mean, it sounds a very generic super, name. Super, I thought he was a porn super star. Super cool. Now he's a uh, he's a I don't know what he would call himself. He's a a psychotherapist, I guess. He's a he got in a lot of trouble with the gender debate in Canada, mm-hmm. and he kind of went viral. But he, um, super smart dude, but he mm-hmm. seems to think that uh, he's pretty pessimistic. He's pretty, pe- and he's a smarter, much smarter guy than I am. So well, I just I mean, am terrified about that. That's what, one of the reasons why I like guns so much. Short well, I mean, look, look at Nostradamus. I mean, you know, he was probably smarter than us, but, and, you know, he thought... Yeah. The yeah. Mayans fucked me. Did they get you? Yeah. Did they? <laughs> they really did. I'm not joking. Mm. <laughs> I had a bunch of fucking freeze-dried shit that I would never eat in 2012. They got me. Just oh, my God. Mayans. They did. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Devin. Oh, yeah. Devin. 2012? Oh, oh yeah. my God. I didn't get it by 20, uh, 2000. I didn't, for some reason. It so, didn't there, hold on. Let me get this straight. The mind calendar no, 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 no. You're not fucking with me. No, so, no. no oh. You believe that there was like some sort of predetermined apocalypse from people mm-hmm. who used to wipe their ass with their hands. Yep. Okay. Just checking. That's why I wasn't sure. It wasn't quite clear. <laughs> That's exactly right. I don't know. And now looking back on it, you know. Yeah, it's I'm kind a of fucking, fucking idiot. idiot. Yes. But, yeah. Uh, but at yeah. least, at least we can sit here. I had right, some extra, yeah. some extra freeze dried shit and a noose if things got too bad. But uh, oh, but no, nothing happened. So it fucking minds. Yeah, they thought it was going to end for Y two K. Also, I didn't yeah, get exactly. that one. That's, no, there's there's a, a, a doomsday prediction. Du jour mm-hmm. every few years, but your gun uh, advocacy doesn't tie in any kind of civil unrest or anything that you see coming. No, 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 no. I mean, like my gun. I mean, again, like it, it depends. I'm very um, discreet, right? I, I've got a, a subtle delivery when it comes. Guy's to wearing gun. a fucking tuxedo. Yeah, right. right. No, no, no. In the worst, in the worst room in Louisiana to be in at the moment. No, 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 no. I know. So. So look, I, I, no, there are there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people who interpret what I put out there differently, right? And and that's the way I like it. I mean, it, it's um, in a way is deliberately vague. Like there is no message, right? Um, I think if you watch my content, you see that I care a lot about concealed handguns. You know, because that for me, like I see that, and that's you know, I'm I am by the way, and this is my plug for U.S. Law Shield. Um, I'm the U.S. Law Shield program attorney for Louisiana. So if somebody and sh- I know that, how do you know that? Because I'm very well. Research. I'm kind of friends with Lana. Oh, uh, Lana's fantastic. Uh, she, she is. I She's love great. Lana. I love her too. But Tell yeah, you brought you brought the book in with the uh, yeah. So I showed him. I was like, see, 
This, I wanted him a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I wrote the I have book. The book. Yeah, armed and educated, yeah, Louisiana it. gun law. So yeah, and I, um, of all people, you know, and I don't want to speak about rival gun ranges, but of all people, Brandon LaBeouf, who can find a flaw in just about anything, I saw that Paul, um, <laughs> who can find a flaw in just about anything, was like, dude, this is the best book like I have ever seen on this subject. Everybody should be forced to buy one of these when they take a concealed handgun class. So like I feel passionately about that. I feel right. passionately about the law. And I'm I'm the US Law Shield program attorney. If somebody shoots somebody in Louisiana and they're a US Law Shield member, they call me, it goes to me. We just had one. Uh, yeah. Well, how many how many fucking phone calls do you get every day? Um, I mean, it depends what you they mean. They call you? Yes. Well, like if it's phone? an emergency, if it's an emergency, it goes directly to my cell phone. If it's an emergency. Now, what will happen is I'll see that. I'll see the emergency line light up, and somebody will be like, hey. Holy fuck, he's yeah. dead. <laughs> no, no, they'll be like, well. James, where are you? No, they'll, they'll, it'll be like, hey, yeah, I didn't get my newsletter this month. Uh, and I'm like, sir, is this an emergency? He's like, oh, my, I, I didn't see that the huge red number here on the card that says emergency yeah i thought i thought that was and you know so probably 75 percent of the calls i get on the emergency line are people with non-emergencies but you know it's like i'm calling 911 for pizza i'm watching the game i'm i mean and if you looked up the news you would probably figure out what this was but uh, i'm not going to name any names but it's like uh, i'm we name names i'm watching the news or watching the news i'm watching the game the saints game in New Hampshire do do that this yourself? past weekend. I love the Saints, dude. I've been a season ticket holder for six years now. but nice. um, And Saints family. But in any event, um, I'm sitting there watching the game. I get a phone call on the emergency line. I'm at the uh, Sea Dog Brewery in New Hampshire. And I'm like, ah, Lynn, it's probably somebody. You know, like, Give me a second. It's probably somebody who's like, you know, they're lost. You know, they need, uh, they can't figure out uh, if they have reciprocity in Texas or something like that. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, I pick up the phone and it's like, you know, this woman, she's like, oh, yeah, my husband just killed someone. I'm like, okay, this one's going to be like a little bit more intensive. So uh, those calls I get once a month at maybe, maybe once every six weeks. Um, you know, I'm very proud of the fact that now it's only been, U.S. Law Shield's only been here for about two years. But I'm very proud of the fact that so far, no one convicted of a felony under my watch and no one copying to a felony under my watch. That's about to change. We've got some pretty bad ones that came through. But um, but at least for the first two years, everybody was either getting off scot-free or misdemeanors. So, you know, if you were an early adopter of U.S. Law Shield, you had a good run for two years. Um, but, yeah, most of the time it's just people that call in the non-emergency line. And they're like, hey, James, like a big one I get is how do I, you know, carrying a gun in a casino. Like, tell me about carrying a gun in, in a casino. That's a big one. How do I drive through Louisiana with my gun? I'll get a Florida member or a Mississippi member calling about driving to Texas or vice versa. How do I drive through? What do I need to do? What happens if a cop approaches? Stuff like that. So I get those every day, two, three of those every day. But the emergencies are, are about once every six weeks right now. That's crazy. Well, I know we're having an event here coming up in November. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah I'm excited. Right. I know. I'm excited, We'll talk too. about that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Unless y'all want to talk about it now. Have you, uh, we can talk about it Yeah, now. we'll talk about yeah. it. So it's November 16th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. here at the range. What yes. is it? Yes. I, clothing it's like optional? A, clothing is optional. At any event, I do. No, it's, <laughs> um, no, and, and I'm not joking around where I try to say I, I um, I try to scare the audience shitless because uh, here's the thing is people don't understand that you can beat the charge, but you can't beat the ride. And there are so many, I mean, I just literally, man, I'm on the phone with my guy from this weekend on the way to the range here. And that's part of the reason why I was six minutes late. Um, but you have people who are terrified, you know, they may have been lawfully defending themselves, but you have a cop you know, who says like, Hey, look, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to let the court figure this out. Like I'm going to book you for murder. 
and you're going to spend the night in jail. Your bond's going to be set somewhere between five hundred and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Shitty food, right? Milk, I mean, the TV's milk, okay. Milk. I've been to jail once, and it was you know TV some, was good. Yeah, good t- Jerry Springer and grape Kool Aid, but you know some of these <laughs> guys. Milk. But that's what happens is like you know we have people who for, some of them will have bond coverage, or some Hate of them milk. will have the means. They'll have the means to get bonded out, but many of them don't. And at that point, like if it's murder. You know, you better pick up checkers, man, because like you Ooh. might be in there for a minute and it whether or not you rightfully defended yourself. People call you every day. Um, they don't understand like you being in jail. That's a huge priority for you. I get it. Like that is your number one priority right now for everyone else it, other than me. Uh, you're as your lawyer. That's an extremely low priority. So it's like you'll call in somebody killed somebody. 72 hours ago and you'll call the clerk of court and they'll be like who you know no he's not even in the system yet you know it's like and there's nothing you can do so do not leave me in there so no that's what happens you get your <laughs> you i yeah, mean they, you may or may not have with a fucking file on it no you may or may not have like your initial appearance where your bond will be set and your bond will be set at some massive amount of money and then you'll just sit there and stew in jail um until yeah somebody bails you out and hopefully you know um we can do something for you. Um, but that that is, the, the point of this is to educate people. Like there is a lot of gray area because what happens is you go to the concealed handgun courses and you're like, this is legal, this is illegal. And if you do things that are legal, you're not going to get in trouble. And that's not necessarily true right. because uh, 90% of the people that I get on the emergency line are people who would I mean, every now and then you'll find somebody who it's like, hey, man, like maybe, you know, you had your foot a little bit too much on the gas pedal, but you still defended yourself lawfully. That was still lawful self-defense. We get that a lot. But that said, they're still going to be put through the process. You're still going to go to jail. You're still going to need to get bailed out. And people need to realize that that can be, um, it's bad. A process. It's a pro- no. I mean, and, and it's just the fear and like having to talk to uh, mothers, having to talk to wives, having to talk to children. Daddy's in jail. He wants to be home by Christmas, and you've got to tell him like, guys, no. Like, I'm hoping we can get an initial hearing before Christmas. So you know, it's a it's a tough job. But I mean, that's the point of like my seminar. Uh, I go in there and I try to educate people. We look at actual cases. We talk about actual cases. We talk about, uh, and I pull the audience and I say, hey, look, you're the jury, guilty or not guilty. And I tell everybody there's no wrong answer because any of you could have been in the jury with this same set of facts. But you look around the room. Like if these guys were in the jury, you'd be in prison for life. No chance of parole. You know, second degree murder, you'd be in chance for life. No parole, no nothing. Like you're in there your entire life. Um, but if that half of the the rooms in the jury, you get off scot free. So it's a good exercise, and we do that over and over. We look at def- different cases, different sets of facts. I ask people guilty, not guilty. I ask people to kind of tell me about it. That's what I do. I'm gonna stop talking about it now. I went really long. I just in case no. you guys can't tell, I'm very passionate about it. Yeah. So, no, it's good. No, which I think is another reason why you're successful in a lot of the stuff you do. Well, thanks, Devin. That's I mean, why yeah. I like to uh, talk to people that are. We have. Uh, all of our guests are usually hyper focused on something. You got a lot of stuff going on. It seems like you, yeah, doing it really well. Which is why I wanted to talk to you too. Well, I, I mean, like to see how people's brains work when they got a lot of, you know, balls in the air. Yeah, and it's real. It's natural. It's not fake. Right. Right. Well, There's I mean, no that's fucking commercial coming yeah. on about uh, Viagra after this, and I don't right, have to read right. your yeah. notes about what we're gonna go over. And you know, people think it's funny. They're like, uh, you tell them like you're a lawyer, and uh, you know, and it isn't like the first point of conversation, but it, every now and then it'll come up. Especially like I'll have other lawyers that are like, "Hey, man, great video the other week." You know that watch the channel, well, we, which is funny. I I don't know why I didn't make the connection sooner, but two years ago. I was at Chant Show, and somebody in front of me walking, you were walking on a bridge. Uh, One of the pedestrian me. bridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards me, and, and I was with the guy uh, that used to work here. <clears throat> and right before he said it, somebody in front of me said, hey, that's, uh, you know, that's Jane from the, the YouTube that you do, James Reeves. And, uh, and as soon as he said that, 
the guy I was walking with I said, yeah, it's James Reeves from. I said, yeah, man, that guy from Shooters Club. Yeah. What, what's and then you know I started watching your videos. No, that's funny. It. No, I, I remember that. I was I was walking. So from I think a lot of people that the maybe Sands don't to... even just you know that you might not even realize that don't subscribe. I think a lot of people listen to your content and um, and like to hear what you have to say. Well, I mean, I, I can't give up lawyering. I can't give up YouTube. And everybody, if you tell people on YouTube that you're a lawyer, they assume you're a shitty lawyer. If you tell anyone who's a lawyer that you do YouTube, they assume you're a shitty YouTuber. So I'm <laughs> all in on everything. That? Oh, because, I mean, it, it's insanity. I mean, I talked to you to about my all. schedule. Can't yeah, do more than one thing. Yeah, it's it's insanity. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like, I mean, here I am. So I got up at 6 o'clock this morning, as I always do. I went to the gym. I got to my desk by 8 o'clock. I was there for almost 10 hours. Um, went back to my house, packed my shit up, came out here, shot guns with Ryan, shot video, and I haven't even cleaned my shit up yet, and I'm up here talking to you, and I'm hoping to be in bed before 11 o'clock tonight to repeat everything. Yeah, I know we're on a, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I know we're on a, uh, a clock here. So we like to end with uh, a few things. We're going to let Paul, we got some emails. We're going to pick a few of the emails. We're going to let Paul read you some emails that we got for you. We told people that you were coming on. Oh, no. Give me some good ones, Paul. And if, uh, you know, if you don't want to answer one, just say fuck off, and we'll go to the next one. So, uh, we'll see. Mark sent one. If you could only keep one pistol, rifle, and shotgun, what would they be? Oh, God. Oh, God. I hate this question. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one of you sack of shit. Dang it. Um, well, I mean, okay. How about this? What an asshole, huh? I know. Yeah. Okay, next. Um, no, rifle's pretty easy. Um, it would have to be a 16-inch AR-15. Right now, my favorite one, I've got like a complete BCM. I don't really dick with stuff. Like, I'm not one of those, oh, it needs the super custom hot rod trigger. I mean, it's a, I've got a BCM that's got a Surefire Scout light on it and a SIG Tango 6T. Aren't they and, awesome? Yeah, they're fantastic. I have a BCM recce. Yeah, love it's them. It's awesome. Love them. So it's like, that would be my go-to because you can handle just about anything that you need to handle where we live. And that's the thing. Your consideration is your immediate environment, mm -hmm. right? So for me, like a 16, anything from 12 and a half to 16 um, in an AR platform, good to go, right? So that, that would be an easy one. Shotgun, normally I would be like, oh, yeah. 70 SBS that I loved and I've had forever and ever. I'm no. thinking you're going Beretta. 1301. Best shotgun I've ever shot. I've got an M4. Like I've got, yeah. Yeah, it's almost as if you've seen my opinion <laughs> before in a moving Don't picture, you, perhaps you, on the internet. You, no, the Beretta 1301 has, has to have been uh, one of the, and it's so funny because, I mean, I'm not the first guy to come to this conclusion. There are better shotgun guys than me out there who I watch their content and I'm like, oh shit. Like, you know, and then I go to Thunder Ranch and Jack Daniel, who's like one of the best instructors in the United States. Jack is like, oh, Beretta 1301. Is, he's like, that's the one you need to get. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, like this is the one to get. So that would be my shotgun. Pistol, I mean, you have to go Glock 19. Not because they sponsor the channel. but No, <laughs> um, no and truly, that's a funny story that I'm, I'm not going to spend too Everybody much time Everybody carries a Glock. It's yeah, a, but I, I mean... Three. No, I mean, I like. I think they're fantastic. Uh, that's and, the only thing I would carry. And people call me like they for years called me a Glock shell. Like my one of my first. Videos. I used to hate Glock at Shooters Club, yeah, and those motherfuckers would never break. They We've would never, never send a Glock back yeah, for a pair yeah, at and, Shooters Club. But it, it's funny because people are like Glock shell, Glock shell, Glock shell. I got called up by Glock to Smyrna, and Josh Dorsey, who there's no way he's listening to this. Um, <laughs> Josh, Dorsey. thank you. I know. <laughs> <Pretty good. laughs> Josh Dorsey, um, president of Glock USA, um, says, yeah, we called you up. I thought I was getting a factory tour. He's like, yeah, we called you up here, and he's flipping over pieces of paper. He's like, what made you call the SIG P365 the best handgun of <laughs> SHOT Show 2018? How much funny. are they paying you? And I'm like, dude, they're not paying me shit. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, they're not paying me shit. Like, I mean, that was just, believe it or not, my actual opinion. And so it's been actual opinion for years and so years. So if we pay you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's the funny thing about it is, like, Glock, they didn't pay me for years. I love, like, Glock 43X, one of my most favorite handguns possibly of all time. And I've said that for years and years and years. So finally, like, this past summer, Glock is like, 
we will sponsor you. And I don't handle the money. Like, the money doesn't go to me. Patreon money doesn't go to me. I mean, a portion of it does, just like it does to everybody, like Ryan, and, you know, to support the channel. But I, I don't know how much a sponsorship costs for TFB TV at all. But they uh, apparently contacted, like, our marketing company, and they're like, we will sponsor James for one month <laughs> and it was like <laughs> years and years and years of quote unquote chilling you know for glock and there but that's cool you know that's fine and i almost they were like james are you cool with this because like i i worry about my appearance like the appearance of impropriety or like i'm taking money to say that this thing is good but i've got such a long track record of being gaston glock's illegitimate child that it's like I, I didn't care. I was like, screw it. I think it'd be awesome for Glock you, to sponsor the channel. Do you know what Glock made before they made firearms? Yeah, toilet seats and uh, shower curtains. Yeah, yeah, curtain, yeah, curtain rods. rods and, yeah, yeah, curtain yeah, rods. Yeah, that's the uh, seventeen is the seventeenth patent. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. All right, give me uh, two more, Paul. We we got to get out of here soon, and I got something else after that. Two more quick, uh, easy ones. <clears throat> have you ever had to fight an animal to death, and did you win? So obviously, you must have won if you ever did. Um, yeah, right. I know that's a good... not the brightest people. You here. saw that dude that killed that fucking mountain lion in yeah, uh, Colorado. Yeah, I saw that. And, and uh, you know, I'm a big outdoorsman, so um, I have, you know, I do pay close attention to that. I've had, I've probably encountered, and everybody's gonna be like bullshit. But I mean, if you go on my Instagram, you can see like I, I photograph bears. I like photographing Ooh. bears, and so I've probably encountered thirty to forty uh, brown bears and black bears, um, and if you know what you're doing. You don't have to. I, I would hate, honestly, I know this is going to make me sound like a giant pussy, but it's like, dude, I would be crushed if I had to shoot. Like, I'm going to photograph brown bears, and it's like, hey, that's a cool bear. Let me take a picture of it. Now let me shoot it in the fucking face. You know, it's like that would be a, a tragedy. So, you know, I always try to stay educated on how to – and, and – the science, the research is changing all the time where it's like, oh, bear spray works. And then they're like, oh, shit, bear spray actually doesn't work. And, it, you know, it goes back and forth. So I've done a bunch of videos on, like, bear defense. But fortunately, no, it's never come to that. Um, I, I'm sure I've been attacked by a goose uh, sometime. I got chased by a bull a black bear that was uh, probably 600 pounds, the biggest one i ever seen I, on the Ho River Trail in Olympia National Park, um, and that was terrifying. We watched a video of a girl who was snowboarding, and she was she had her camera selfie out stick. or her phone out on a, a stick, a selfie stick, and as she snowboarding, just mm, she got her headphones on and everything, and all of a sudden she pans this way, and there's a bear just barreling down on her. Yeah, and I can't outrun <laughs> a bear. Just to be clear, I mean, like there was a curious black bear who was, you know. Uh, following my wife and I for probably about 250 yards. Mm. And then fortunately we ran into another, and that's the thing. Numbers. You're faster than your wife. No, no, no. Yeah. I would, I would never, I would never, oh, I, would no, ne I honestly God. would never No, But I, uh, so <laughs> yeah, there you go. I would um, never. Either. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, look like Glock, uh, a Glock 20 with hard cast. Um, yeah, that's that, what the Alaskan uh, state troopers. That's do, right. Man. And that, that that's supposedly should do theirs. the trick. All right, Paul, number three. All right, last one. What is your favorite gun in your collection? That's a fucking boring one. All right, what's your favorite one? Or have you yeah. ever had sex on a plane? Either okay. that one. That's no, better, no, no, that's no, a no. One. Yeah, that is. No, plane? no, surprisingly, like, I ha I have not. I have. Oh, it's, God damn it, I'm not against it. I mean, I just, it's not one of those things. And my wife is a never nude. She would be, like, absolutely mortified if, uh, you know, to even, even the implication. But, no, I mean, I, I don't have, like, a collection per se. I'm not a gun collector. Tour. I mean, I've got a lot of guns, but I shoot all of them. Um, you know, I have a couple like Russian AKs that I've kept in the box, just you know, not to open them <laughs> purely for investment. Then purposes. you're a collector. No, no, <laughs> no. I think of like a collector, like oh, this has sentimental value to me. Not like well, I mean, you had one. You're an investor. I, mean, I have some pre World War II like PP PPK PPKSs. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? I mean, and that's cool shit. But I mean, I I see. Uh, collector differently than enthusiast or investor. If you're buying guns for the purpose of invest making money, then I, I see you as more an investor, not necessarily a collector. I'm trying to get back to plane banging. We'll go back to that, that <laughs> first one that we got. We got one about uh, somebody wanted to know if he would ever sell something. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, sorry, I just closed it. Up. It's a uh, guy says uh, you have a um, uh, Sean and Metairie. Says so you have a Zestava M90 serial number two. 
Seven. Oh, oh, seven. I had well, I had number two, but I borrowed that. But now I've got double oh seven. Because uh, he wants to know how much uh, do you want for it? He's got cash, daddy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then see, that's the thing. I don't sell any of my guns, um, and the main reason for that is a lot of times, you know, like the guys at Zostava, like Ranko at Zostava, is like James. You know, and I'm going to do like butcher his accent. I hope he doesn't listen to this either. And he's like, James, I want you to have. Zostva M90 007, <laughs> you know, and it's, and he sent me, I had 002 for testing and evaluation, but I sent that back to them. Mm. 001 was at the factory. I sent That, that might have had to been lost in shipping. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> My, one of the ones I have, one of the best ones I had was, I had a Colt SP1 serial number 198. Ooh. Yeah, who sold you that, dickhead? You? I got it on a police trade and it was only like 400 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, got a nice deal. I passed it along. This fucker buys a house with it. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, hey, no, yeah, whatever. You you set yourself up for it. But, I mean, you know, it's I get stuff like Samson sent me the Mini 14, the folding stock, like the A-Team folding stock. When they did I have serial number one of that. Um, <sighs> Dead Air sent me the serial number one of the Primal. And it isn't the object that means so much to me it's the gesture right. and like the yes. fact that people would do that to me and the trust that they have in me well, they can it... gesture the shit out of me <laughs> <laughs> man my my goodie bag is gonna look like shit now you should have kept that to yourself it's the gesture okay. like i said yeah. i mean well, it's, it... it's uh it's a bunch of plastic fucking martini glasses <laughs> all right so quick fire round uh we do this with uh, a lot of our more important guests i want short answers okay What's the last book you read? Oh, I haven't read in years. No? No, no not, Audible not, books? Not enough time. I mean, 1776 for Audible. Okay. 1776. If you uh, have to have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, fuck. Um, either Eugene Stoner or Frank Sinatra. God, that's a good answer. Yeah. Why Why Frank? Oh, just, I mean, it was the, like... First thing that popped top of yeah, my head. It was probably because I'm wearing a tuxedo. That's right. If I wasn't wearing a tuxedo, it'd be something. I mean, Elvis, that'd be pretty fucking cool, right? If you knew you were going to die Kogan. in 24 to 48 hours, would you Lou? Oh, God, dude. How, how is that supposed to be a short answer? Right. I would give you a detailed itinerary. Well, I mean, I, I would just sleep. say die, but I mean, you're smarter than I would, so. Yeah, I, no, dude. I mean, I, I'm not binge, even sure. I would binge Game of Thrones probably with my old lady. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I... Um, I would, let's just say, like, I would do something I would hope would be unfathomable. You can only make That's one it. YouTube video. What would it be? The next one. Last one. Oh, the last one before I die? You have one more YouTube video to make before they, you're no longer allowed on YouTube. What would the subject matter be? Um, I think that would be, like, my first political video. Like, yeah. if that's the last one, that's where I would just lay it all out and be like, you want to know everything? Here it is. I would just say everything I ever wanted to say um, as a way of expressing my appreciation for the viewers. If you could be the inventor of any object, firearm, of anything, what would you have liked to invented that has already been invented? Um, I'm pretty sure I'd call it the Stocket Pussy. It's oh, like a pocket pussy, right. Do you have but an those? AR-15 stock. I've oh, seen. man. How much is that? No, I'm kidding. Oh, um, God damn it. I'm, I'm kidding. This motherfucker. Well, yeah. they actually came out with one called the uh, the, the Finisher or something like that, or the um, Matt Best. I don't know if you ever watched his videos. They did the Ultimate Finish is what it was called. And it was a rail attachment where you attached to the front of the uh, AR rail and went down to, uh, to that so you can shoot, have both. Uh, While you, you shoot fuck and, your AR. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. I, I don't. A, I next don't question in my head yeah. too. Now that you're banging your AR, <laughs> God, I guess it, it'll do it all. <laughs> I would want to invent. How about this? I'd want to invent a machine that, like, not ultrasonic, because that like tears apart aluminum or whatever. I mean, it, like, I would want to invent like a machine that's like the ultrasonic machine that doesn't fuck up guns. Like, literally, you put it in there and doesn't give you cancer or whatever. You just put it in there and your gun comes out clean, like, magically mm -hmm. clean and dry, like, and or lubed up or whatever the case may be, like, 30 minutes. That yes, would be... I... <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the little bing. Yeah, no, no. Exa Dude, I would love that so much. Like, it would save so much time, like, having to clean your guns if you could just put it in a machine and cut it on and that son of a bitch kicks it out pristine i, I see the that. commercial already like an old know. 50s commercial and the woman takes it out 
Ah. Yeah. <laughs> if, you could, if you could go back in time with the sole purpose of killing one individual, who would you choose? <sighs> Dang it. I mean, you know, everybody always picks, like, Hitler's the obvious one, but I mean... See, you know, I, I don't think you'd go with Hitler. I think no, you got I wouldn't. another... I wouldn't no, either. I wouldn't. Um, I Probably Mikhail Kalashnikov, mm -hmm. just because I... Rosie O'Donnell. How about this? How about this? Um, <laughs> fucking Rosie, you don't fucking hammer me. How about this? I feel the same way about AK people, like how I feel about parrot heads, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with Jimmy Buffett. I've got a problem with Jimmy Buffett fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You can do the math. And fortunately, if I don't elaborate any further, AK people won't figure it out. You got a question for James? Do you see ghosts? No, uh, ghosts no? Are, no, ghosts are bullshit. Come on, no. Really? Oh, okay, no, 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 hold on a second. We got fucking Oh no, no, no. shit. We got, we got the Mayan prepper over here, and now we got the ghost lady. You don't fucking, have any. You do have the ghost lady. You don't have any. Before None. we before we stop, because I like to get into this just a little bit. I know, okay. I know, we're running on uh, borrowed time. Do you have any? Uh, anything like that that you have second thought, like moon landing conspiracy, ancient yes. aliens, uh, aliens, Jeez. ghosts? You have anything like that? I think just about everything in reality can be questioned to some extent. I I never think that anything is a one hundred percent. So you've never truth. seen something that you can't explain. You've never, you know, in the sky, you've never seen. Uh, Oh, dude, there's a you lot of nothing? shit that I can't explain, but it's just because I'm a fucking idiot. I mean, like, I've seen a lot of stuff. I can't, I can't explain magnets. I don't know. Like, yeah, they are tricky. I yeah. can't explain magnets either. But there's nothing that, uh, that sticks out as, like, a conspiracy type. No, I mean, I got to tell you, like, of stuff that I've read, anytime I see something on the news and they're like, oh, this is what happened. You know, 9-11, like, Tower 7, sure, 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 any sure, of that sure. shit. Sure. Yeah, Did Epstein how, kill himself? Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, how about that? How about that? Of all the pet conspiracies, that one's probably my favorite. I think that was my, there's, there's none that, to me, is so... Do my, does my daughter shit in the tub? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's... Did Epstein kill himself? There's no conspiracy <laughs> theory or, like, uh, fringe theory to me that is so probable that I lend it any credence to it but i never dismiss it out of hand either so i think that you know God, you're an attorney well no no, no. i mean <laughs> yeah. but, but that's the way and, and i wish more attorneys were like that because you have absolutists you have people who are like it is this way and my client is right and your client is wrong it's like okay man please if we've done this enough like you can get in front of a jury and that jury thinks that your client's wrong in this jury. So stop acting like it's an absolute truth. Yeah, and, Rana. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude, great movie. Great, mandatory, <laughs> mandatory for all lawyers. But, I mean, it, it's nothing is an absolute truth. And, uh, uh, or you know, I'm sure two plus two equals four. Math, maybe. You know, but I, I don't believe in absolute truths. Just like I don't go all in on conspiracy theories either, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, I try to give everyone their perspective and I try to take it all in and I try to be as unbiased as possible, but you know, I, I'm not a blind follower very much. Mm -hmm. You got anything else? No. Ginger? No, I was, <laughs> ghost keep is good. I'm sorry about that, Ginger. No, I ain't gonna be sorry. I know what I see and mm. yeah, he, they don't. <laughs> he saw something but up I here. Do. We'll go into I'll that take later. That I back. Yes, you we'll do. We'll go into that later on the next one. James, I know you got to get out of here. I really appreciate it. I uh, I enjoyed having you at the other store before. You can probably even remember us. Oh, meeting. I can remember. But can. Uh, I'm super stoked that you're doing good on YouTube. I think you're a really nice guy. Uh, I think you do a lot for the industry, and uh, and I hope to see you a lot more often. Thanks, Devin. I mean, no shit, no joking. That means a lot to me. Yeah. And and thank you guys for having me. No. Like, I had a blast. Thanks I always for making the time. Oh no, no, no! I always like doing these. You know, it's like any any time I can um, talk to great people in the industry and like make these connections. It's cool. This is so, why we. Sorry to be this, sappy. This is why we built this room. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, <laughs> now I, if, what you, now I, look, I, I don't want to be like a uh, an armchair quarterback, but I mean, if you had four working microphones. <laughs> that would be very, very it, would, it would be helpful. <laughs> just saying. I can only Shit just seems much. to break after it sits for a while. I don't understand it. They it's, were up it's here a goddamn ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll work on the mics. I appreciate it. But again, man, I really appreciate you coming. Um, I hope to see you a lot more soon. And keep making videos. I think a lot of people get a lot out of them, uh, including myself. So 
It's been Thanks a, a ton, guys. All right, guys. Awesome. Tune in. Uh, make sure. Well, uh, to take us out with our giveaways because you know more about that shit than All me. right. Go, <laughs> you can go to the number two shots in podcast.com and register on the website. Or if you go to, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, just make sure you subscribe publicly so that we can see that you've subscribed when we do the, the drawing for the Ruger Wrangler pistol. YouTube channel on YouTube. And then if you send us an email. Oh, yeah, and our YouTube channel is the number two, <laughs> two shots in podcast. Yes. And then uh, one more thing I forgot to give you. So we got you a goodie bag. Okay. All right. You Thank go. you. A little shot glass. We got you a uh, little hat. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, dude. I don't look at this. You're look at these locks. You think I hide this hair with a hat? <laughs> You're have you ever seen it? I know, I know. You got a fucking massive, beautiful head. I'm of part hair. of the poo poo crew. Pew pew crew. Oh, pew pew. <laughs> you fucking asshole. And then we got you <laughs> our new. <laughs> <was> right. <laughs> <laughs> then we got you our new fresh. That better be athletic from fit. Retro rifle company. Our uh, our new uniform. So you're officially. I'm gonna pretend like I love it right so now, <laughs> and then I'm gonna take it. Then you I'm can gonna get take it fitted. You I'm, can get it fitted. Yeah, I'm gonna take it to T and A Taylor's. Yeah, probably, yeah that shit back and in I'm gonna get this athletic fit. All right, James. Again, another sign off. Thank Thanks, you, brother. Guys. I really appreciate you coming Thank in. You. Thank you. Thank you. Later.